welcome to the Lincoln Theater. We do ask that there's no eating, drinking, or smoking during the presentation. And as a courtesy to the guests around you, please no photography or video recording of any kind. At this time, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. And if you need to exit the theater for any reason, including the conclusion of our show, please do so to the doors to your far right. If you need to leave early, just go ahead and give those doors a push, head to your left through the curtain, and off to Main Street, USA. The show first premiered at the World's Fair in 1964, alongside the Carousel of Progress and It's a Small World. It came to the Opera House in 1965, and it's a Disneyland gem because Walt Disney himself originally directed it. Now through the magic of Disney, it is my pleasure to present Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. the American dream, the prayer for the future. But that golden goal was not to be had without cost. The American way was not gained in a day. It was born in adversity, forged out of conflict, perfected and proven only after long experience and trial. In all of history, no man was dedicated to this dream more than the 16th president of these United States, Abraham Lincoln. Here in his own words is what he once wrote about himself. For at that time, very few people outside Illinois knew very much about this man from the prairie. I was born February 12th. 1809, in Hardin County, Kentucky. My father removed from Kentucky to what is now Spencer County, Indiana, in my eighth year. It was a wild region, with many bears and other wild animals still in the woods. There I grew up. I was large for my age, and had an axe put into my hands at once, and from that to my 23rd year, was almost constantly handling that most useful instrument. I think that the aggregate of all my schooling did not amount to one year. At 21, I came to Illinois, thought of trying to study law, or rather thought I could not succeed at that without better education. I borrowed some law books, took them home, and went at it in good earnest. In 1854, the law profession had almost superseded the thought of politics in my mind, when the repeal of the Missouri Compromise aroused me as I had never been before. What I have done since then is pretty well known. If any 
personal description of me is thought desirable. It may be said I am in height, six feet four inches nearly, lean in flesh, weighing on an average 180 pounds, dark complexion with coarse black hair and gray eyes, and no other marks or brands recollected. Yours very truly, A. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln became president faced with the terrible threat of civil war, a thing he dreaded, yet a calamity he was prepared to meet if he must. Without union, the Constitution is only a piece of paper. I know there is a God, and that he hates injustice and slavery. I see the storm coming. I know his hand is in it. If he has a place, work for me. And I think he has. I believe I'm ready. And with God's help, I shall not fail. April 12, 1861, Fort Sumter. The cannon spoke for war. Civil war, violent, devastating. Now had come the reckoning, the supreme test that would decide whether a republic founded on liberty could survive the terrible strife of men's passions. Seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. Ten brief sentences, so simple, so direct. Abraham Lincoln had not expected his words to live beyond their temporary moment, but time and history would dictate otherwise. And so today, his Gettysburg Address is immortal, a rich and treasured part of our country's heritage. We pay tribute here, not to a man who lived a century ago, but to an individual 
who lives today in the hearts of all freedom-loving people. His prophetic words are as valid for our time as they were for his. And now, the skills of the sculptor and the talents of the artist will let us relive great moments with Mr. Lincoln. The world has never had a good definition of the word liberty. And the American people just now are much in want of one. We all declare for liberty. But in using the same word, we do not all mean the same thing. What constitutes the bulwark of our liberty and independence? It is not our frowning battlements, our bristling sea coasts. These are not our reliance against tyranny. Our reliance is in the love of liberty, which God has planted in our bosoms. Our defense is in the preservation of the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men, in all lands, everywhere. Destroy this spirit, and you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. At what point shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to step the ocean and crush us with a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring from amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all times or die by suicide. Neither let us be slandered from our duty by false accusations against us, nor frightened from it by the menaces of destruction to the government, nor of dungeons to ourselves. Let us have faith that right makes might. And in that faith, let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it.
Calling all dreamers, come one, come all. Get ready to believe and make believe all over again. Because dreams were made to come true. All you have to do is make a wish and let your heart take flight. You won't need wings to feel the joy or the fun. For in just 30 minutes, magic happens.
I just meant because, you know, you're integrating two lines together. And, you know, there's a... They're like the Curtis, you know, you know, one party at a time. But everyone you have to go, and, you know, it's sort of like, hey, what is this? Like, this is just like a good monster. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'm right. They should have some, or they should have some right there. That's right.
your ghost host. <laughs> Kindly step all the way in, please, and make room for everyone. There's no turning back now. Our tour begins here in this area, where you see paintings of some of our guests as they appeared in their corruptible mortal state. an aura of foreboding, almost as though you sense a disquieting metamorphosis. Is this haunted room actually stretching, or is it your imagination? Mm -hmm. And consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> of course, there's always my way. will materialize only if you remain safely seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside and watch your children, please. Para su seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del vehículo. Y cuide a los pequeñitos y ahora prepárese.
we find it delightfully unlivable here in this ghostly retreat. Every room has wall-to-wall -wall creeps and hot and cold running chills. Shh, listen. Happy haunts have received your sympathetic vibrations and are beginning to materialize. They're assembling for you, swinging awake, and they'll be expecting me. I'll see you all a little later. Have interrupted our 
tour. Please remain seated with your new buggy. We will proceed in just a moment.